I talked about in my videos that I thought the Dallas Mavericks were one of the winners in pre, not free agency, but at the trade deadline, even though everyone's going to be like, oh, they gave up their picks. I thought they were able to get bigger and they were able to get contracts that were at that were reasonable value and that if they need to flip them, they'll be flippable in the future. First off, PJ Washington, if he rebounds to what he was, he gives them great value. Daniel Gafford, we knew that every time Derek Lively sat, the Mavericks were getting outsized. They get a guy who's very similar in players, an athletic rim running, screen setting, shot blocking, big. Basically, you can play now Lively 24 minutes, Gafford 24 minutes. And and for me, it makes a lot of sense. Like, I, I, I honestly like they're on a five game win streak. This team over this span has been one of the better teams in basketball over the last two weeks. They're five and two. They're the sixth best defense, 14th in offense, 10th, the sixth best defensive point differential. And they're showing their ability. Like, now they're starting lineup. They're running PJ Washington at power forward, which I said. Because they're part of the reason Grant Williams obviously was rubbing people the wrong way allegedly, but Derek Jones Jr. was a bargain bin value, they, like the bet one of the best steals of free agency. He was outperforming his contract, and then so is Dante Exum. And Kleba's coming back healthy. Now you have PJ who give, who also PJ can Peter small ball five if you ever wanted to play those lineups. And in games where you want, you know, here Derek Lively was injured or like, you know, didn't play tonight. So you had Daniel Gaffer come out at 16 points, 17 rebounds. All right. Five blocks, two steals, two assists. Like it was beautiful. And then PJ Washington had nine points, five rebounds. And obviously his three point shot wasn't falling, but he was finding other ways to make plays having three assists. So PJ Washington was figuring it out. Kyrie and Luca both had 26, 13 from Josh Green. Off the bench, he had Tim Hardaway Jr. with five. Klebo had five. And Derek Jones had two. And Jane Hardy had 10. And I know it was against the Wizards, but my Wizards. But, you know, Luka Doncic had a triple double. And I just think, you know, yeah, they outscored the, the Wizards 34 to 16, the fourth quarter. And they shot 52.2% in that period. I just thought it was a really good game. And also, Denny Abbey had a career high tonight, and it was it was definitely interesting to see this game. But the biggest thing is this Dallas Mavericks team. We're starting to see it take shape, and I'm liking it so far. PJ Washington, two games, eleven and a half points, five rebounds, two assists, averages like eleven and a half points, five five rebounds, two assists, shooting forty seven point six percent from the field. Three point shot isn't hitting, but Daniel Gafford over here, 17 half points, 13 rebounds, three blocks, a steal, and it says obviously these are skewed two games, but you gotta like it. You gotta like it. You gotta be impressed. And I'm enjoying it. I think it goes to show that hey, this is a team that is improving. Five game win streak, and they could really be dark horses to make some noise in the playoffs. So I think PJ, you know, Daniel Gafford and PJ Washington were great pickups at the deadline. And I, obviously this team was already on a win streak before they came, but they're making the Dallas Mavericks look even more dangerous. Okay. And that's the biggest thing that people need to understand. This team is just looking big, long, and two way. And I want to hear you guys' thoughts if you guys agree with me on that one. What's your expectations for the Dallas Mavericks now this season? But yeah, that's my two cents on this one. Peace out.